I'm Jonah Comstock, Editor-in-Chief at Pharma Forum. I'm here at Reuters Pharma USA with Jeffrey Meckler, CEO of Adaptus Therapeutics. Hi, Jeffrey. Hello. Thank you for having us. Thanks for joining me. This was a kind of a last minute one that we <laughs> squeezed in, um, but I'm very excited to hear about what you do at Indaptus. I understand uh, it's a really a novel um, therapeutic approach. Yeah. So at Indaptus, what we do is we take a more holistic, if a way to uh, put it in simple terms, approach to immunotherapy. Really, our belief in the foundation of our company is that to get an efficient and effective activation of the immune system, you need to engage the entire immune system, both the innate and the adaptive, and all their associated pathways. The, what we feel the real challenge has been in immunotherapy over the last decade has been, it's been a very targeted approach. You know, everyone talks about targeted IO. Well, we think exactly the opposite is what you need. When you go after targeted IO, you get limitations, both from the toxicity and from the efficacy, you know, the number one uh, immunotherapy really only works in, you know, depending on the cancer type or whatever, one out of five, one out of four patients. So it shows there's a lot we have to be doing and a lot more. What we've seen in our preclinical data has been something that's been really, you know, 80 to 100 uh, percent activation. So that's wow. why we're really excited. So how does that work? How does a non-targeted immunotherapy work? So it, the, if I could go back just for a second on what immunotherapy, the pathway we've gone down, is the last couple decades has really focused on these targets. And what happened was we found ideas, and it was all based on the concept that if you activate the entire immune system, bad things will happen. So. One of the analogies I love to use, this was back in my days, I was at the museum, uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art, guy puts a box on the desk. He said, this is the box. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He said, this is the box. This is the box when you're told you have to think outside the box. Here it is. Well, Michael Newman, our chief science officer, and he's the inventor uh, of the technology and founder, what he did was he went outside the box and he said, look, we need to get the whole immune system going. Now, this was totally contrary to everything everybody has been thinking so far. And so what he came up with was, how can we do it safely? So our platform is based on kind of a observation we've known for hundreds of years is that in the presence of a serious infection, very often we'll see cancer going to remission or regression or even complete response. And so he looked at that and said, well, why is that? Well, in bacteria, there are all these immune agonists. We've evolved with bacteria over, you know, as long as we've evolved as, you know, mammals. And the fact is that we have developed this immune process when we see bacteria. The problem has always been it's so toxic. And we've come up with a way with our proprietary technology, as well as understanding the levels of different immune agonists to both chemically and genetically modify bacteria in a way to make a therapeutic from that. And so we entered the clinic just uh, last year, and we're now in the second part of our early studies, but we're actually showing an unprecedented cytokine and chemokine response. And in doing it, we're also showing for the first time we can safely give this uh, systemic administration. Most cancer agents are targeted. Um, and so we turn the whole immune system on. We're there for a short time. We do our job, our, we get out, and then we get reset. And so we're going to start very shortly our uh, next set of the studies. Does that generalized approach also mean that it works for a wider range of indications? Or is it still targeted in that way? No, it, it's actually interesting you raise that because we have seen it active in a whole variety of cancer settings, whether it's pancreatic, uh, non-small cell uh, lung cancer, hepatocellular, but even more importantly, it's an immune stimulant. So anything that has an immune activation component could potentially be a therapy, particularly uh, antivirals and even as a, an adjuvant in a vaccine. So it has a very broad application what we have to do now is kind of learn a little bit more how we work, you know, how quickly it's, um, you know, taken out of the system, 
how the immune processes work. And when we start multi-dosing here shortly, we're going to get another part of that chapter written of understanding how we're modulating the entire immune system. So you talked a little bit about kind of the stage that you're in, but if you had to put a number on it, uh, how far along is this? We're very early. This is still phase one. So in clinical trials, uh, I know you know this, but for anyone out there, I mean, clinical trials, you have phase one, which is really the safety component. And you look for a little bit of signals. Phase two is proof of concept. And phase three is when you're doing it large enough statistically to know and go for approvals from the regulatory agencies. We're in phase one. It's just we, our phase one's divine, divine, uh, designed in three steps, and we're now in our second step of it. Right. So you're mainly looking for safety, but you are starting to see some efficacy signals. We're hoping this year that as we multi-dose, our, our premise is this is pulse prime. And what we do is we give it and we activate the immune system, and then it's cleared within two hours. By doing this, we avert many of the immune uh, safety components people have always had about stimulating the immune system. So during COVID, everyone talked about cytokine storm, and that's where your immune system is just basically going into overdrive. That's a big thing in cell and gene therapy too, a, yeah. a big thing they're trying to avoid. Exactly. Well, the way we avoid it is by being cleared by the body so quickly that we're turning everything on, but think of it as we're turning the, the blender on and then turning it off right away. So we don't take the ice cubes and make them all water, but we grind them up a little bit. And that analogy of this turn on, turn off, we think doing it multiple times will then start to show some efficacy. And in our preclinical models as monotherapy, that's what we saw, whether it was six or eight or four, it was in different models and mice are not humans. So we just need to do the work in humans. But the fact that we as a two, two and a half year old company, Michael Newman's idea, and I remember when we started down this path, right at the beginning of COVID, everyone was kind of like, you'll never get the FDA to let you put this in humans. If you put it in humans, you're gonna have all these immune response. It's gonna be toxic. And it's all been proven. The science actually is working. And that's what we're all excited about because this year is a big year for us to kind of start showing maybe some efficacy signs in the uh, uh, multi-dose. Fascinating. So when you're doing something like this, it's so different than the approach everyone else is taking. Um, it, it seems like there'll be really myriad challenges, you know, assuming everything goes well um, in phase two and phase three, just trying to get adoption and getting, you know, get folks to, to look at uh, immunotherapy in a different way. I mean, is, is that something you guys are thinking about, the, sort of the dangers of being sort of well, it's iconoclastic? A, yeah, no, it, you're absolutely right. And I think it's actually the, the change in mentality and the paradigm shift is actually earlier. Right now, as we talk to folks, it's why would we want to turn on the entire immune system if we could just get the CD8 or CD4 or the interferon alpha elevated, that would solve the problem. And what we've seen in different therapies is it works sometimes. And the reason is if that one component is the gate keeping activity for the cancer to grow, what we think is we go back to the kind of main component of what cancer is, which is just cell programming gone awry. Your body is dealing with that all the time. When cancers grow, they're able to avoid the immune system and we actually know that cancers um, reprogram, reset the immune system by having this decoy where the body thinks there is something going on and it needs to activate all the pathways. It resets it and lets the body do what it does naturally. Now, when we step back and we look at current advances in immunotherapy, the real excitement now has been in ADCs, um, these antibody drug conjugates. And the concept is we have, a, we have some sort of drug or some sort of approach that we know will kill the cancer, but if we give too much of it, it's too toxic because it goes after healthy cells. Yes. So let's, you know, take the war, let's find a warhead, the ADCs, and put drugs in there, that warhead, and we'll, we'll send, the, send the bombs off after cancer. That, or the gene therapy and the CAR T, we're going to reprogram this one component, whether it's... Uh, gamma delta or CD8 cells, whatever, 
we just think you need, it takes a village. You need this broader approach. And we actually think we will work in combination very well. So in preclinical models, in hepatocellular, we showed 100% complete response. 100% of the mice in our studies in HCC had the tumors all resolved. And in other models, we've been 80% or whatever. But we see that in combination with PD-1. When we add our therapeutic to current therapeutics, it often doubles or triples the efficacy. And it makes total sense is that, you know, PD-1 is program uh, cell death. They were telling it, take the brakes off, go after the cancer. Well, if that's the limiting factor of your cancer or whatever, that works. If it's only one component, but we add the rest of the immune system kicking in, it just works better. So we've shown uh, um, synergies with NSAIDs. We've shown synergies with low-dose chemotherapy. We've shown synergies with targeted antibodies. Now, all of this is preclinical, but our goal this year is to get the multi-dose done so next year we can then actually start doing the combo therapy. And to your original question on the changing of the paradigm, we're a data-driven industry. If the data, if I, if I show this, incrementally improves things 10%, I, people are not going to get too excited about this approach. But if I show it that, wow, I can improve 30, 40, 100% uh, improvement over current therapies, we'll get people, the adoption and the attention will all come. Right. It wouldn't matter what it was if it's that effective. Exactly. Yeah. But right now, it, it's a challenge because certain people you know, have a paradigm where this you know, induction of 50 plus cytokines and chemokines. We did a paper at SITSI just this past year, uh, November, and people were like, I've never seen this before. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I've never seen this kind of immune response. And we have, uh, we announced actually um, Monday, we'll be at AACR with some more mechanism of action data. And so the pieces are coming together and that's the excitement we have. And that will change how people think about us. Awesome. Well, really cool to hear about what you do. Thanks so much, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure.